Oops, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> Rani here. Shall we make a game? Um, today I am going to be attempting to make a character model. And um, I'm going to be roughly sticking to the um, T56 Fez sort of polygon density. And uh, that's um, going to be really low poly. There's not really a huge point in making something really high poly for this. Um, it's going to be going to this scene. So even though it's going to end up in a completely different file, I'm going to be modeling it in here just so we can get an idea of how it kind of looks in context. And I'm also going to be putting its texture data into the same atlas and separating it out later. So, again, the hardest thing with like modeling something is always kind of like breaking ground, you know, it's always kind of like going from um, sort of just nothing to having something. It's always like, you know, finding that kind of, um, I guess, kind of confidence or whatever to kind of like put down that first polygon and then work it out from there. So, we are um, roughly modeling an old man. Um, so, Height-wise, quite often um, elderly people tend to have shrunk slightly in terms of height. So I'm going to go for a height of about 1.55. And of course, they haven't actually shrunk. What is actually happening is more kind of like spine, um, spine, spine compression and things like that. So I'm going to be modeling this guy in a T-pose. Now, one of the things is the animation system of this game engine um, it doesn't really exist. It's basically more like a flip book. So... I'm actually going to be modeling each individual pose. However, I'm going to be doing a T pose just so I've got a base to kind of like turn into all those other poses. So, um, I'm going to just subdivide this down the middle and add the mirror modifier as it's customary. And then assign a texture. Ah. Maybe we should hold off on that. Yeah, switch over to solid view just so I can kind of like get the sort of vague shape right. Um, okay, so it's been, it has actually been a hot minute since I've done the character modeling. So this might end up a bit, this might look a bit weird for a bit until I, you know, find my footing again. Um, now one of the things with like a T56 Fez style, if it brings back up, is um, the idea behind T56 is that you're, um, well, you're trying to make a character model in 256 triangles. That isn't actually a lot. Um, even PlayStation 1 game models were usually a little bit north of that. But it's just a good benchmark to keep like the time down. And the way people tend to do this, this is a good example here, is um, you unfortunately can't see in super detail here, but this is probably a three-sided limb. All these limbs are at most four-sided, but most of them are three-sided. And they tend to do a lot of kind of like shaping using transparent textures, which would be an issue in most common engines. It'd be especially a problem for things like VR chat because um, VR in particular does not mix well with um, transparent surfaces um, due to fill rate concerns. But for a software render, it's fine. It's like three sides, whatever. And also all this normal stuff you have about um, poly count um, uh, character joint, I think is probably a good way of searching for it. Um, you normally have, ah, oh, I should have found this first. Um, uh, oh, where is it going? Oh yeah, here, here you go. This is it. You normally have kind of like all sorts of like support geometry to make sure that like when the uh, limb kind of bends, that it does it in a way that's you know, correct and expected. Um, you don't really have the luxury of doing that. And that can be a problem for kind of like, you know, I'm saying traditional, modern, um, animation pipelines because you know they're based on things like bones, but we're not working with bones here, so that's actually going to be fine for us. So let's collapse this edge. Where are you? There it is, collapse. And then merge these together. Center. I'm just going to hide the body temporarily so I can work on these. Now, um, because there, there's, there isn't actually, a, if you're doing like a three-sided uh, uh, sort of limb, I've seen multiple ways of actually um, orienting this kind of triangle that you've made, right? Um, if you want kind of like more of a stocky character, having the flat edge on the outside kind of helps with that because the silhouette kind of ends up sort of chunkier. If you've got kind of like a more sort of like a curvaceous character, um, having the, um, having the uh, 
vertex on the outside helps because it means that kind of like the, you know, there's like a, well, there's like a point along the side, so they look kind of thinner and lighter. Um, I've also seen a lot where people kind of um, have one going forwards and two at the back or vice versa. Um, I'm thinking this guy is going to be, because like, um, I'm thinking about like the situation is in, right? It's in this apartment. It clearly doesn't have great like heating because it has a um, has a radiator. Quite often, at least in modern society, the elderly um, have problems with their um, problems affording heating and things like that. So it's a good chance if this guy fell asleep comfortably, he did it wearing you know baggy, heavy clothing. So I'm going to make him quite stocky, even though he's probably going to be a little frail and thin. He's going to be wearing pretty heavy clothing, and it's the clothing we're actually modelling here. So if I reveal hidden, because if I press the keyboard shortcut, Intel will pop up an annoying thing. Um, let's add a loop kind of here. And then uh, what am I going to do with the top of this? Let's just extrude it. So this, this is going to look terrible at first. Character models kind of always do. And then you kind of like tune them to where they need to be. So again, I'm just going to um, hide unselected, um, collapse. Collapse. A little hidden. Oops. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't real. I didn't realize it could do that. Um, it actually collapsed the vertex. It was well. It, it collapsed the edge that was hidden. There we go. That's more what we wanted. Okay. Man, this looks terrible. But we're gonna we're gonna make it work. We're gonna make it work. Um, the head quite often ends up just being a box. And um, you really have to kind of like think about exactly where you're going to be spending those. Yeah, here we are again. How's it going? You really do have to think about um, kind of like where you're going to be spending those triangles because you know if you try and make like a sphere, you're going to like um, exhaust your triangle count quickly. Let me see if I can get the statistics up. Again, like um, there we go. So we're currently up to forty-one triangles, but you got to remember this is mirrored, so. It's actually um, 82, and um, I've done, I've not even done the second segment of the arms. There's nothing there but boxes, and it looks absolutely terrible. So, oh, and also a lot of these don't even join up. Um, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking the guy is going to be wearing some kind of like jacket, right? Because he would need that to kind of stay comfortable in this kind of environment. Um, so we're going to have to leave quite a bit of sort of space for that. Right, and this question is how am I going to join this to this? Because of course I've got this here and what am I going to do? Let's put an edge loop there, join that to that, and see what happens. Again, um, being this isn't going to be kind of like, you know, sort of, I keep calling it traditional rendering, but like it's more like modern rendering. Oh, actually, I might just, I might just do that. That actually look pretty good. Um, Having kind of like intersecting or like floating geometry is actually not a problem for me, really. But I'd still just rather just not do it if I can help it. Okay, it's way too chunky. That's more like it. I'm gonna like round out the front a bit. Um, and like, um, a lot of the reason that kind of like uh, elderly people can kind of appear short is quite often they have a bit of a stoop, right? And that's part of a pose, but if it's gonna be kind of like their part of their sort of um, default pose, I'm going to include it in kind of like this sort of T pose model. Yeah, going to, it's going to be like in kind of like sort of most default sort of pose. Um, let's move these up. This, yeah, this, this character model is going to look terrible for a very long time. It's just kind of like how, <laughs> how character models tend to go. And I think there's always a thing with kind of like doing like models at this low polygon, like how you kind of like deal with feet and things because they're quite often, quite often hard to see. Um, however, we're going to have like, you know, you'll be able to see in, like, in this kind of angle, so you're definitely going to be able to see at least some of that silhouette. You can probably get away with like doing a bit of a foot. Um, and I might merge one of these vertices into one of these just so that it's kind of saving vertices. And then. Right, yeah, this is going to look really, really weird and bad until it's textured. That's that's one of the things about the kind of like these, particularly about these much lower poly styles is that they look really strange, 
and then you texture them and then look kind of and they look kind of okay. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. So again, um, if this guy is kind of like, you know, sort of dressed to be comfortable in this kind of environment, and if he'd be kind of like okay on the rooftop, probably wearing some like, you know, not like boots or something, but something like, you know, a nice like warm pair of slippers or something like that, so we can kind of like leave plenty of sort of volume for that. Okay. Um, hmm. Now, when it comes to like actually placing vertices, you're always about silhouette, right? That's what you're kind of like actually producing is a silhouette. Anything that's inside the silhouette is done entirely using textures. So if he's like wearing a jacket that's a bit kind of baggy, you'd want that kind of in the in the geometry as much as you can get away with. And yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Fill these in. Might come back later on and change these up a bit if they turn out to be a bit expensive on polygons for no real benefit. Um, look at the triangle at the end of there. Again, hands. Um, hands. I actually think it's easier to 3D model hands than it is to draw them, but um, they're still pretty difficult to 3D model. Fortunately, in this kind of art style, you don't normally model hands. You just basically give them kind of clubs. <laughs> So again, kind of like the uh, feet, where it's just going to be kind of like roughly sort of like a stub. As long as it's roughly the right size and roughly in the right place, and it's textured reasonably well, it'll look kind of like a hat. Kind of like a wrist, although don't want to go overboard on the wrist on the basis that it's meant to be kind of like wearing some pretty heavy clothes. Yeah, I might bring this down a bit to kind of hint at kind of like a bit of sag on the clothes. That way. Okay, this is still looking pretty rubbish, but it's getting uh, it's getting a bit starting to look a bit more. I don't know, vaguely human. <laughs> okay, so again, when it comes to the head, um, there's actually some geometry I've seen before in um, um, I think it's Animal Crossing. Which is actually kind of ingenious. Um, oh, these are all the newer games which didn't don't do this. It's kind of the original. Um, it was a particular kind of sphere that um, unwrapped really well. Was it the N sixty four that did this? Ah, I guess I'm going to find it. This might have been just some random like blog post from years ago that might might not even exist anymore. Yeah, I, I was going to look that up, because if, if I could find it, I was going to use it, but yeah, I just couldn't find it at a quick glance, so I'm just going to do something a bit more ad hoc. Um, head size might be slightly exaggerated in this game, I haven't quite figured that out yet, but I'm, I'm going to like not exaggerate it too much for now. Um, let's think about how I'm going to join this to the rest of this. Again, this isn't kind of like um, a modern sort of game engine, um, so I can get away with things like, um, say, joining with a single point or like just intersecting the head into the, into the body. You can get away with that. It doesn't really cause you any problems. So I might just do that. It's a bit, it's a bit wrong. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do this in industry. <laughs> Okay, now we want to start round this out a bit. So, sort of like all these. How are we doing for triangles? Okay, we're at 71, so that's 142. And we've almost got the basics of the model sort of, sort of done. It, yeah, I mean, it's, it's mostly a matter of moving these vertices at this point. We probably have almost enough vertices to actually, actually do the whole model. And we've got a bunch that we can spend on various bits and pieces. Now, um, 
the kind of advice that um, I remember being given um, in kind of like sort of a sort of like a life drawing class was um, the idea of the the human skull basically being kind of like a a whistle. Um, you can't view it from the sides. It's kind of, um, let's see if I can find the uh, again. See if I can find the reference for this. Um, yeah, because it's kind of like um, the kind of like back of the head is kind of like rounded, and then like the chin is sort of like um, you know sort of straight and like I was described as being like a whistle. And when I saw when I heard this when I had it explained, it was like I never unsaw it. So yeah, we need to round this out way more. Raise it that way a bit. Human heads always look terrible until they don't. You know, so it suddenly it suddenly clicks and you go, oh, that suddenly looks like not quite a person, but it looks <laughs> it doesn't look like a childlike drawing anymore. It'll happen at some point. Okay, this looks pretty terrible. Oh my god. I, I'm starting to remember, well, not remember, but like, learn why I've never done character modeling on the stream before. <laughs> okay, um, let's do a vague unwrap. Um, one of the things is when you're kind of like working with stuff that's this kind of like low poly and like low, um, low texture density is that the unwrap and the model kind of go hand in hand. They're not like really that separable. Kind of have to do them at the same time. The uh, the one supports the other. You're constantly moving details between the model and the texture. So I did say I was going to give him a bit of a stoop, didn't I? That's one of the other things that's kind of weird about like um, modeling. Uh, uh, characters is that you have to like put a bit of like a curve into the spine usually otherwise it just looks really weird and stiff but then like if you actually if you like kind of like try, try to draw a character without sort of like having seen that it's it feels kind of weird putting it in also like you have to be like not not afraid to put an ass on a character <laughs> That one, that one takes a bit of getting used to, but I am going to push this back out a bit because he's meant to be wearing like relatively baggy clothes. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's about right. Um, getting getting arm length is also quite difficult because. Um, well, I mean, like again, like unless you're actually like studying artwork, you don't tend to like stare at like arms and go hey yeah the the proportion between the top and the bottom is this and the hand tends to be part of the proportion of the bottom half and things like that is <laughs> give it a try and you understand why people have to study this <laughs> yeah. even if you're making like really crude low poly stuff like this yeah, so I'm thinking that I do want to exaggerate this at the head size very, very, very slightly, but not this, not this much. One of the things is because I'm working in mirror mode, there's only geometry on the one side. So if I say grabbed all this and I scale it down, it actually, the sort of like center of scaling ends up being here, not here. So like the two halves kind of separate. So that's why I've put the 3D cursor there. I'm going to use that as the sort of pivot point for the scale instead. Right, so... Um, Again, one of the other things is um, you kind of like model and texture hair, right? Shorter hair, like say um, if someone was like partially shaven or if like they hadn't you know, grown it out, normally just texture that on. But of course, like if you've got any kind of um, any kind of like anything longer than say like a, I don't know, like a gray, well, anything longer than you could do with a shaver, you'd sort of like say um, model on. Um, I'm going to have a bit of hair kind of like sort of, Sticking that to here, just a bit. You know, it's gonna, it's gonna be like a bit unkempt. Like, he doesn't have much hair, but it's a bit unkempt, so it kind of sticks out a bit. But it might not be enough that I have to model it. It might be uh, little enough that I can get away with just texturing it. So, so yeah, let's find, let's finally do that unwrap I was promising earlier. 
there's our current unwrap. That's looking um, uh, pretty Cthulian. <laughs> um, so the they call it you know traditional stuff of um, yeah you, know, you want to put the seams where you're least likely to see them kind of applies. The only thing that's a bit different is um, because we're working at such a low resolution, you want to be really precise about how they kind of fall on the pixel lines of the image and the way you wouldn't be if you're doing a more modern design. Um, unwrapping things like the, like the feet and the hands always gets kind of interesting because there isn't really a correct way of unwrapping them because they're so sort of dense. <laughs> Non-Euclidean is a great name. Okay, I'm just going to separate the arm off entirely. Um, it means you will have a seam there, but I can I can align the texture quite easily along there because we're snapping the pixels. So mark a seam. Um, what am I going to do with this? Hmm. Do I put a point on the top? Oh, yeah, I think I'm going to. I'm going to put a point on the top, and the reason for that is it just gives me some bits that I can kind of like um, I can put seams on these. So when it kind of like flattens out, it's got a bit more to kind of work with. Um, I'm going to do the same on the bottom. You're not actually going to see either of those particularly well. You're mostly going to see it from the side. So having seams on top and bottom is fine. Okay. Oh yeah, and also, also separate this here because that's going to be a big, big seam. Okay, how are we looking so far? Now what I'd normally do actually, and I might do this, I'm gonna do this now, is um, Blender has some built-in features. Oh, I can't use them while I'm... Um... <sighs> Blender has multiple renderers, right? For doing retro stuff, I tend to use Workbench because Workbench just allows you to do this thing where it just takes the colors out of the texture and puts them on the screen with no processing. And for doing retro stuff, that's going into like an engine that has no lighting, it's actually really ideal. However, oh, he's got like the sky on his face. Um, however, for some reason, you can't deselect a texture when you're in the workbench renderer. I'm not really sure why. There's like options in here, but like they, the, there's nothing in here really that's useful. So I have to switch to Eevee, which is kind of like their sort of um, Marmoset tool bag equivalent. As you can see, it's doing lighting and stuff. You might be able to turn this off, but I just want the simpler renderer. But I have to go to this. And then I can pick a texture. Um, yeah. Um, is it that one I want? No, it's not check texture. Um, and then I can pick a texture and then I switch back to the render I actually want. It's a bit weird. I'm, I, I suspect it may be like a bug or something. I'm not sure. Oh, I may have made the mistake. Oh, there we go. Um, can I just do it in here? Ah, oh, here we go, here we go. Yeah, this is, this is what I wanted. Um, generate a UV grid. And let's make it say, hmm, 128 by 128. That's probably about as big as we're gonna go. Ah, but uh, let me change the generation type. Because it's currently, um, there we go, the color grids. Because this one has this nice sort of um, soft kind of, um, checkerboard grid on it, which you can use to really see the uh, exact exact pixels that you're plotting. You can see distortion and stuff really easily. And again, it, it defaults to um, linear, so like, you know, soft edge pixels, which we don't want because the engine doesn't do that. It wouldn't actually, it wouldn't actually be that hard for me to implement it, but it's just not what the game's meant to look like. Yeah, okay, so now we can start actually trying to unravel this properly. Ah, I think this is the body. Yeah. Now, at the moment, I've got this kind of hole in the, um, in the kind of where the arm goes. And that's a bit, makes it a bit difficult to unwrap because like it actually kind of like really wants to peel sort of like the front and the back as away from one another. So I'm going to put a seam in there and see if that reduces like the distortion a bit. Yeah, that's, that's, um, yeah, it, it really kind of wanted to separate the front and back and that has. You can see we've got like these relatively nice straight lines in the in the sort of like pixel grid because there's not a huge amount of distortion there anymore. Um, the heads, how's the head looking? It will get a bit 
a bit distorted, we can kind of fix it ourselves. There's actually like two different modes in this. There's the angle based and conformal, and I don't really know what the difference is. Sometimes one of them seems to do a better job and sometimes the other one does. I couldn't tell you why. <laughs> okay, again, separate, I'm gonna separate the hand out from the rest of the arm, just so I can get a really clean, simple unwrap on the arm. Um... Yeah, hands tend to get a bit weird. You look at the um, the texture of a hand and you go, I do not understand how that maps to a hand, but it seems to work, so okay. Oh, I might... Oh, I've got to fill that in. I was like, I might merge that down to that, but that would kind of, like, destroy the shape of the foot, so I won't. Um, yeah, do the same with the foot over here. Oops, I ended up rotating the object. Don't do that. And how are we going to run the scene for the foot on the edge here? We can put the scenes basically wherever we want them on things like the feet and hands because, um, again, like they're going to be so kind of like weirdly precise about where we're putting pixels, it doesn't really matter where the seams are. You could, in theory, like put seams all over this model because we're going to be hammering them into like pixel boundaries anyway. So that is starting to look okay. One of the things that is kind of like a bit weird is, um, this is kind of looking like it's rocked back a bit, which isn't quite intentional. So I'm just going to pull the front down a bit. Okay, that's starting to... That is starting to look like a human skull slightly. Slightly. I might give it a bit of a bulge out at the sides. And the reason for that is we're going to have a bit of, um, a bit of kind of like hair there. I might actually do it on the back as well. To kind of like support the hair, make it kind of look like it's kind of like bulged out a bit. And also the ears. Okay, and now I'm going to... That is actually probably a good starting point. I know it looks terrible right now, but we're going somewhere with this. So now I can swip it. Swip it. I can flip it back to the apartment. And then I can go back into workbench mode. And get to work. So, I probably want to be around the pixel density of the surrounding environment, which is why I've kept them in the same... Um, get them in the same scene. But um, it is kind of okay to not exactly one-to-one -one match. If you look at like things like, um, I mean, there's some really good looking games, like say Dino Crisis and things like that, that um, have um, fully kind of like 3D environments. And they definitely do not use the same pixel density in their environments as they do the characters for kind of obvious reasons. Their, their character models are insane for the PlayStation 1. They're, they're so good. And you know, um, as much as I wasn't super keen on Dino Crisis 2, man, its character models were amazing. Um, but yeah, you can you can get away with like quite a bit of variance between the. It, it looked kind of weird if like so this TV was four times the resolution of this floor, but if this character model is a bit different, well, that's kind of fine. It is also going to be distorting a bit as it kind of like animates. So, yeah, it, it's just kind of like a given that there's not quite the same consistency, of pixel density. So, let's go a bit less dense than that. That's probably about right. It's very, very, very slightly higher resolution than the surroundings, but you can see we'll still have plenty of detail to put kind of like, maybe some like you know, really big folds into the clothing and stuff like that. Okay. Now, this is a bit that's um, contentious. This is a bit that's up for debate, whether this is right or wrong. Straightening all the edges. Now, um, strictly speaking, this introduces distortion, right? Because you've taken something that isn't a straight edge and then you've applied a straight edge texture to it. So it's, it is distorting the kind of like pixels. But, but it means you don't end up with kind of like a sort of like a sawtooth pattern of pixels along the edge, which kind of looks a bit strange. Like people didn't tend to do that. And I think the reason they didn't tend to do that is because it means you can fill the whole texture sheet. You're not wasting any of it if it's all squares. Whereas it's harder to do that if you've got kind of like, you know, diagonals and stuff like that. This is the body, right? Yep. Right. So, this is going to join straight onto this. I'm not actually going to merge them together, but um, to get that kind of like consistency, 
where there's not like an obvious edge between the two, I am going to kind of like size one based off the other here. So if I scale this down a bit. Yeah, so that's going to be the same size as that. And I might try and do the same size as this, as this here. Yeah, unwrapping bits like this here are always kind of awkward because they don't quite, um, yeah, they're, they're kind of like not part of this just general sort of tube shape of the body. Um, the other thing is, um, yeah, um, I might end up changing the width of this, oops, and this just because um, they're less visible than the front. So I might find that the front needs like a slightly different number of pixels and then adjust the kind of like to match. So let's just stretch this out. Let's just see how it looks. Um, maybe the UV grid would actually be a good idea to keep on for a bit. Oh, oh, actually, can I change it here? I can. Um, there we go. <laughs> it just didn't apply for some reason. Um, yeah, so I can see, I can see like this hugely distorted pixel, you know, triangle of pixels here that just looks very weird. It does look very PlayStation 1, but um, the models that actually went into the PlayStation 1's GPU didn't look like that. It's actually the um, very limited... I, th I think it used integer math to do like the 3D on the PlayStation 1, which is just kind of crazy. Okay, that's going to be about right. Um, actually, I think there's like snap in here, isn't it? Yes, there is. So I could actually snap this to that. So I don't have to be kind of like eyeballing whether they're aligned or not. I can just, yeah, nice. Um, now I don't want to line these up because the actual vertices are very not lined up. And I kind of want that sort of ver vertex higher up because I want the kind of like chest to project out. But I want a bit of geometry around here so that I can kind of yeah, you know, do stuff with the with the sort of like armpit without it kind of distorting the whole the whole body. Um, let's move this back in line as well. There we go. And this, this. The way I quite often do this is with the scale tool. Actually, um, I'll just um, yeah, set um set one of the vertices in the line as the sort of like. 2D cursor and then just um, scale down to zero on X or Y or whatever. I haven't done that though this time for some reason. It's going to be a bit of distortion here as it's very unlikely that we'll have an exact pixel match for where our um, where our vertex is. However, however, we are free to move these vertices around however we like. And we can use that. We can use that to get a bit of extra um, you know, to to sort of like correct, we can correct for the UV distortion in our 3D geometry by moving these vertices to line up with where the pixels are. In this case though, I think the cause of this distortion is the fact that this is a lot wider on here than it is on here. So I might kind of like break that rule slightly, or I might actually just widen this. Oh, oh don't do that. <laughs> break very slightly, see if that, yeah, that's that's improved that quite a lot. It's still got a bit of distortion, but like I feel like that won't be super noticeable in practice, especially with just like the you know terrible software renderer. <laughs> yeah, let's, do, let's let's make that hang down a bit. It looks a bit like a jacket hanging down. Um, ah, but there's a bit of a problem here because I've got these um. This tri this uh, quadrilateral is kind of like shaped like that, right? Because it's kind of hanging down there. But to make room for the kind of like underside, I've actually brought it up. So it actually needs to be more like that to be correct. Hmm. Have I done something similar on the front? I probably should. Yeah, that actually makes a lot more sense in regards to kind of what's going on. However, 
you're basically never going to see this triangle here or this triangle here. So I can actually just make it like a one pixel high kind of like strip of, um, well, I can make it like a single pixel strip like this. And that will actually be good enough. As long as there's something there and it's vaguely the right color, which is gonna be, you know, um, oh, I accidentally merged two, two triangles together. As long as it's roughly the right color, which is going to be basically black because it's gonna be so dark. It should be good. Okay, there's a lot of distortion here, and I think that might be because um, if the if the pixels are too wide, that means that this side's too narrow. And I can see why that would be because um, this jacket actually gets quite a lot wider than the leg, so I can probably get away with doing a bit of a bend like that. Uh. Maybe I don't perfectly align these all the way up. Maybe, maybe you know, I allow this to get a bit wider. Okay, next up, next up, let's have a look at the arms. How are the arms doing? This is an arm, there it is. So I'm gonna try and keep a similar kind of pixel density again. The most important thing with the arm is that it kind of like lines up perfectly with the top of the shoulder, ah, which isn't a straight edge, that's gonna be a problem. So, do I do that? I guess I can do that. We end up with quite a bit of distortion along the top, but um, the, I don't want a super obvious seam because I don't have like square pixels along the edge. Um, is this the other side of this? Oh, that gets kind of awkward because if I flatten this down to this, of course you end up with like a zero height triangle on the EV map, which means that it doesn't actually visible. And if I do that to line up with that, well, you end up with like a super distorted triangle. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to lower this down a bit. Then, yeah, but it needs to be the same width as that too. Sorry, that. It needs to be the same width as that. That's also super distorted. Let's turn the camera around this way and just compare, compare our geometry with this. So it should actually be flat along the top. So maybe more like this. Ah! Hmm. Again, like this is going at the back. You're not going to see the back of the characters that much in detail, but I might end up doing like a close up or something like that around here. So I need to be a bit more careful there. Hmm. This is one of the things though, right? I might have a better idea on how to do that later when I've actually unwrapped say, everything else. It's, it's very much an iterative process. You don't just kind of sit down and go, I unwrap the arms, then the, then the legs, then, yeah. Even though the general flow is model, unwrap, texture, you quite often find that you end up having to change the model to match the unwrap, or you end up having to adjust the texture, the uh, unwrap to fit the texture. Yeah, people talk about pipelines, and there's a general pipeline, but it's not, it's not completely authoritative. You, you do have to kind of adjust it as time goes on. It's kind of funny that you said Blender Cave because um, it's quite a bright morning and um, I, have, I, am, I am currently sort of in a pillow fort, kind of, just to kind of like block out some of the light because I was kind of struggling a bit with the dark scene. Um, well, I didn't consider it, it's also quite a hot day. <laughs> I might need to take a break in like 20 minutes just to go grab some water. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look at this. So this is the edge we're matching it to. So just temporarily, I'm gonna rotate this and scale it until it's a perfect match for that. Not quite one more pixel. It is indeed, yeah. Okay. So that middle piece is now a perfect match. Is this the edge that we're currently looking at? Yeah, it is. So just for kind of, um, just so I can keep this matched up easily, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna rotate it like that and put it kind of there. It's kind of obvious that's an arm, right? Actually, I'm gonna put it there instead. 
because I'm going to unmirror this at some point and I'm probably going to uniquely texture the left and right side of this character. Not something he would have done back in the day, but um, it allows us to get a bit more kind of like expressive and like have like say, you know, diagonal running wrinkles and things like that. Um, what else do we have? We've got the head, which kind of, kind of looks like, um, well, I guess like um, unwraps of the head that kind of always look like um, projections of the world map. Like much like projections of the world map, none of them is correct, and no matter which one you do, someone is unhappy with it. <laughs> so yeah, I've straightened out the edges, but that's not going to stay like that. Oh, hang on, that's interesting. Is this this is mirrored. Oh, I might have made this inside out. Yeah, so I'm just going to flip this over. And then I'm going to scale it down to roughly match the scale of the body. Now, I've quite intentionally not put a seam on this with the rest of the body, allowing it to kind of like move and rotate independently, because I am actually considering having a bit of um, a lot of like classic PlayStation 1 games had kind of like, you know, three look heads where they could kind of like look around at points of interest. And I kind of want to have that in this game. Um, so it is kind of like a separate object so it can rotate freely. And that means I can actually um, unwrap them quite separately, but I still want it to look plausibly like the rest of the model. So, yeah. Actually, I'm going to reduce this, um, the resolution of this kind of like um, generated texture. Where's it gone? Ah, I've just realized I made a huge mistake. If I flip back around to this, how big was this? 256. Okay. Um, I might end up with a slightly different pixel snap, and I've done that. So I've got it set to snap to pixels, right? I think it's in here, round to pixels, yeah, to corner. Um, but because I made this like, um, this kind of like checkerboard texture really big, um, the pixels have ended up being a different size to the ones I'm actually going to be using. So I might find that some of the, yeah, see that there, right? I've actually um, unwrapped this in a way that isn't going to work. Arrgh. So I might find I've got a bunch of new distortion now I've done that. But you can see that the UVs like perfectly match up between the various body parts, which means that it should... Ah, they don't match up there anymore though. So I just need to grab this edge and move it this way. Oh, it's actually the leg that doesn't quite match up. Yeah, so I should be able to avoid seams there just by being very careful when I paint. Um, yeah. One of the other things about this is um, if you're not that like, great at like character modeling and drawing, which it's def it's definitely my biggest weakness. It's something I've only really I've only really gotten a lot better at in the last couple of years. Um, if you're working in this this low resolution style, anything looks right because it looks like a PlayStation One model no matter no matter how bad it is. Um, hmm. Here's that distortion versus, you know, ease of unwrapping thing again, like... Ideally, I want a straight edge in the UV map down here, but... I want one down here, and there's not really a way of unwrapping this. Yeah, if I don't leave, like, these straight lines here, I don't look a really distorted UV island over the ear, which would be really obvious because it's full of fine detail. So... what do I do here? Do I just... Do I just accept the fact I'm going to have this weird seam down here? I think I might have to. You can't really have a weird seam in the middle of the face. That would just be that being you. That would not be acceptable. Can I move these closer together a bit? Maybe. Again, like I'm kind of like sort of trying to balance uh, UV distortion here versus here. Um, might move this this way a bit just to get a few more texels on the top of the head. And actually, actually that that corrects the distortion there, but now we've distorted this side. Ah! And I can kind of like correct it by doing that, but now we've got like non-straight um, pixels here, which is going to look real bad. Um, it's one of those things where it doesn't matter quite, it doesn't matter quite how you unwrap it, it's never quite right. 
you kind of have to decide what where your trade off is going to be and kind of stick to it. Right, that is that is reasonable. I feel like when we actually come to texture it, it might become uh, it might change a bit. The other thing is, of course, um, no graphics cards out there um, past like the Sega Saturn could actually draw quadrilaterals. So if I have like a square like this, it's actually splitting into triangles. And you might actually be able to improve the unwrap just by rotating the edge. That has not improved it. I'll leave it like that. The other thing is, um, of course, when I actually export this from Blender into um, into into the engine, I have this because um, I'm going to be using OBJ files, right? Um, and an OBJ file when you export it is actually is actually really like it's actually a really easy file format to. I mean, obviously you can't look at it and visualize the model because it's just numbers, but even without knowing anything about OBJ, you can read it and go, I can vaguely tell what this is. You know, these are vertices, you know, it's a V, it's a coordinate. These are normals because they're VN and a number. These are texture coordinates, normal between naught and one. And then these, these are faces. They join, you know, they join the F values we just put in back up. But here's the thing, right? My uh, renderer, just like a graphics card only deals with triangles. So if I see in here, you know, four vertices in a, tri uh, in a, in a face, I have to split it into triangles. I do have some code in this. This, this, this monster here is um, the code that parses this and turns it into data that the engine can actually work with. I have to split triangles over four, um, uh, uh, faces over four, over three vertices into triangles. Um, and there's no guarantee, there's no guarantee, I don't know what algorithm Blender uses to do that. It presumably has some kind of mechanism of um, determining exact, oh, actually, that might be it there, yeah, that's it there. Um, in my case, I just do whatever order they happen to be in the file, you know, make a triangle out of those three, make a triangle out of that one and those and those two. Um, there's no guarantee that my importer will split a quad into triangles quite like Blender will. So if you have faces that are quite distorted like this, that aren't very square, it probably makes sense to split them in Blender just so you know that they'll look the same in Engine. I'm sure there is probably a spec somewhere on the correct way to, um, you know, assign, well, in, to split a face into triangles, but um, it, I haven't read it and um, it's probably really complicated. It usually is. Stuff like this is, um, I remember a long time ago in Real Engine 3, um, like every application has its own idea of, um, how quite how normal mapping works because, um, you have obviously, like the, everyone agrees that the normal points out of like the vertex, right? But then you have the two that point this way and kind of this way. Um, and nobody quite agrees on, <laughs> nobody quite agrees on A, um, which way the other two axes point, and B, um, how they actually change between vertices. Like, does it change linearly? Does it change, you know, some other way? And, um, there's a lot of issues with kind of like that kind of like crinkly tinfoil look, um, particularly with Unreal, Unreal Engine 3, if you weren't very, very careful. But now... Now there's some kind of like agreement called, I think they call it synced normals, where people have come to an agreement on roughly how it's going to work. And it's glorious. It means you can model something and it actually looks vaguely the same in engine, which is just an absolute revelation. Uh, how am I unwrapping this? Oh, actually, maybe if I, yeah. That looks better straight away, just, just by splitting that to triangles. Do the same there. Yeah, last time I did try and do something with like some slightly, um, should we say, adventurous no um, normals. Um, I think into Unity, it did not go well. Hmm. Oh no, it's welded those two vertices together. Um, 
Yeah, so when I um, switched to a low resolution texture, it actually, because I had these two, ver I had the, these two vertices one pixel apart, they rounded to the same pixel on this much smaller texture. So I actually lost the ability to move those two triangles. So I'm going to have to re-unwrap that single triangle and then kind of weld it back on where it needs to be. So let's just move this out of the way. So are you that one? Yes. Are you that one? Yes. I'm gonna have a single pixel of kind of like under jacket, good. And the same has happened on this side, cool. Re-unwrap. Oops, no, I didn't mean to subdivide it. Oops. <laughs> kind of turned it into a Triforce by accident. Um, again, offer it up, see if it merges. Yep, got it right. Offer it up, see if it merges. Yep, got it right. Okay, now we can put this back under here. Careful not to touch them though, because um, I, I don't want them to kind of like merge together into a single island. It's kind of annoying that they do that, because obviously in the 3D view, you have to go into here and you have to explicitly merge vertices together, but they just kind of do it themselves in the UV um, thing. There might be a way of turning that off, but I don't know what it is. Um, okay, next up, I think are the feet and the hands. I think that's what we've got. What's this? What's this? Where does this come from? <laughs> it's that time, everyone. I have a UV. I have a UV island. What is it, and where did it come from? Oh, is it part of the hand? No. Is it part of the foot? Yes, it's the underside of the foot. Okay, I can probably merge that back in with the rest of the foot. Um. Yeah, that's the hands. So let's put that at the end of the arm. One of the things is once I've got this kind of like modeled in, I can probably use it as a base mesh for some of the other characters. Obviously, I'm going to have to make a lot of changes. Um, well, particularly for say like an angel, but <laughs> a lot of it we can get away with keeping. So what we got here? How does that map to that? I don't know. I guess it must be that way around because the only kind of like open edge on that should be the one connecting to the arm. So if I yeah, yeah, that's definitely that's that's definitely the right edge. Yeah, provisionally, I'm just going to put them like this, and then I'm going to look at the distortion and make calls on exactly where it should be. Wait, how has that ended up? Ah, oh, that's off grid too. Damn it! And then I'm going to make calls on how the distortion looks. So the top doesn't look too terrible. Like that's probably going to be fine. We're going to have just enough there to kind of like give the hint of a finger kind of curling around. The front is also pretty good. The back doesn't look terrible. Maybe just, yeah, I might also make this a bit smaller. Ah, but this, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of a compromise because like, do I want too few pixels here or do I want too many pixels here? I should go for a bit of both. And then the end of the hand is usually the hardest to texture because it's, um, you get the fewest pixels and it's doing a lot of heavy lifting. Okay. And then move this into position here. And then these are the foot, aren't they? I might retexture the foot. I might um, remove all the seams on the foot just so I can have like a single island. Let's, um, let's hide everything else just so we can get a better view of what I'm doing here. Because obviously it's intersecting the floor, I couldn't quite see what was going on. I guess I'll remove this seam here, because like I think it's the one you're most likely to see. I don't think you're likely to see any of them, but that's the most likely. That is a pretty interesting looking UV island. Um, but you look at that and it's like, how on earth is that a foot? Well, we'll find out, I guess. So, 
Let's have a look at this and see if we can figure out exactly how this has become a foot. Or how a foot became this. So we have a quad on the bottom that's quite distorted. Is it this one? Okay, so if I rotate this like around there. I'm pretty sure this edge here is actually where it connects to the leg. Yeah. Yeah, if I, if I if I overlap it with the um with the with the uh, texture coordinates of this, it that line kind of creeps in. So again, we can go pretty low res with this. It's you know, it's near the floor. The camera very rarely looks at feet. Yeah, that'll do. Now this is super distorted. Super distorted. In fact, the whole legs ended up a bit distorted because I got this kind of you know, like rising, um, rising line here. We'll, we'll work it out. <laughs> oh, that was that was that was nice. I was just I was about to like try and scale this up to perfectly match the front of the leg, and I just did it by accident. And that'll do. Again, like I'm gonna end up with this kind of like sort of like sawtooth effect where it's kind of like running diagonally across pixels, but it's gonna end up being somewhere. And if it's gonna be somewhere, it's gonna be between the feet. It's gonna be somewhere you're not gonna see. They're probably gonna end up being like nearly just a single flat color anyway. Sort of like probing around, trying to figure out where this should be. Feels like too many pixels really for the bottom of the foot, but. Yeah, in fact, I could probably just make this any shape I like and get away with it because you're not going to be able to see it generally. And I think this. I think this is. Yeah, this is going to be hard to line up, <laughs> if not impossible. That's actually kind of fine though because. Oh, actually, I've just a thought. I've just a thought. Maybe. Maybe this should actually be part of the UV map for this. Maybe that would actually make a lot more sense. So if I separate this out and then take it around, raise this up a bit. See, because now we've managed to correct the UV distortion in, in the leg and it gives us a nice place to put the back of the foot. I just gotta remember that I did that when it comes to actually you know, <laughs> texturing it. Okay. Oh, that's actually that's actually really nasty. Let's see if I can do something about that. Like that, that works. And I've kind of lost the straight edge there, but like I was going to lose it anyway. I should be very careful when I'm unwrapping it. Is that the is that the edge? I'm, I'm trying to like see, see if I can do something about this edge because I, I don't really like it. Can I grab those? And Hmm. I know a lot of people really hate unwrapping. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think it's the utter disaster that a lot of people uh, talk about it being. It's definitely frustrating. And I can see that for certain, um, you know, I can understand that for, I, I can understand that maybe for like people who like have like a sort of like, um, well, maybe like not neurotypical, having to kind of like make compromises between um, distortion and, um, well, filling UV islands and being able to like line up scenes and stuff would probably be actually really difficult. I can, I can understand how that could be a hazard. I personally kind of find it fun because it feels like a bit of an engineering challenge. It's 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 like a bit of an intersection between kind of like en engineering and art because you're trying to create an art piece, but it's kind of like an engineering thing because you're trying to like balance the trade off. Okay, 
I think that's our guy unwrapped. So I'm just gonna take like a two minute break just because um, I've made some mistakes with my, <laughs> with my setup. <laughs> I'll be back in just a sec. Did I miss anything good? <laughs> okay, next up, next up, next up. Let's switch this back to our image. Um, there we go. Okay. And that actually, I mean like, in terms of kind of like with an actual texture on it, that actually looks okay. Um, we're of course gonna have to do some well, a texture for it. So at this point, I'm going to apply the mirror modifier. Um, something else you can do, which is really cool in here, is um, in the data section, you can tell it to mirror the U as well. But um, I think that's going to mirror around the zero point. But I'll do that anyway. Can't apply modifiers when you're in edit mode. So that's kind of like made like a second copy of all the uh, geometry over here so I can grab all this I can move it over. Now, because the feet have kind of merged into the leg, I can't actually connect them, but that's fine because they're two separate legs. However, the rest of it should, should just snap together really nicely. So I should be able to, oh, why isn't that joined to that? That's weird. Uh, we'll figure that out in a second. It should become one happy island and we can just texture from one side straight across to the other. As per usual, you normally put the seam down the back just because you're more likely to see the front and the back. The head is now one big happy island. Okay. And sort of um, sort of like happily, I mean like there's wasted space around the outside, but that gives us like room for props and stuff. It pretty much fills a square. Again, that's more of a um, that's more of a problem for a normal game engine that is what what we're going to be using this with, um, in that we can do whatever shape texture, any any rectangular texture that we want. We don't have to do power of two or square. But for most game engines, having it in the square is definitely an advantage. Well, that's kind of annoying, isn't it? This is this is a uh, there is no perfect positioning of this uh, after space and two apart. There we go. The reason I actually want this perfectly lined up is I'm going to be using the symmetry tools in a sprite, um, which are really really neat. Yeah, I wasn't just doing that for the sake of being neat and for the sake of being neat. It's just it allows me to use the symmetry tools if they're actually symmetrical. Um, next one I'm going to look at is this. Why is this separate? Is it the case I've just mixed it up? And it should actually be like that. Yes. Okay. I just have this. Not that it will actually. Not that it will actually matter at all because um, we're just going to um, have a single sort of color across that entire thing, but it's the principle of it, damn it. Is it that merged? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah if, if they're meant to be merged into one triangle, I want the merged into one triangle. Okay. So next up, I've got to figure out where this is on my actual unwrap. This can actually take quite a while. Um, so I think I might try because um, I never really bother with this, but I might give it a try. Export UV layout. Um, is there an option in here for... Um, hmm, I was wondering if there might be like an option in here to kind of like um, disable the um, 
anti-aliasing because that's just gonna that's not gonna do us much good. Uh, give me a sec just to get this file open. It'll be in here. So what they actually exported. Yeah, so a big part of the problem is, although it exported us like a UV map, it's not actually a great match for, um, as you can see, like, it's put like rounded corners on the geometry, which aren't actually there. Because if I bring up Blender, you can see that they're definitely very square. But because it's anti-alias, the UV um, export, it doesn't match the geometry at all when you're doing it in kind of like pixel art. So, you can bring this in and you can absolutely use it as a guide, it's just that it will be misleading. Can I drag and drop this into Acebrite from... You can, it won't do anything. Great. <laughs> yeah, so you see, like, it's just like, that's, this, this is not useful to us doing pixel art because it's just wrong. <laughs> I might try and use this, but also like it's made like a million colors. So I just I just want like a flat color wherever there happens to be pixels. I'm sure there's going to be an option somewhere that fixes that. I'm going to temporarily make a layer. I don't normally make layers in a sprite because I don't personally find them that useful for like doing simple stuff. They're absolutely useful for doing like really complex compositions though. If you want to make something like I don't know a title screen graphic, and you want to keep your background separate from the text, separate from everything else, very useful for that. Um, so let's try and get an idea of how actually accurate this is. So I'm actually going to use the rectangle tool for once. Try, I'm trying to learn something from my mistakes. And let's see how well that lines up. You know what? That actually doesn't look bad. I take it back. This might actually be quite useful. You have my apologies, um, Blender. So yeah, I'm just going to shade these in various colors. So yeah, there is kind of like a ring of kind of um, incorrect pixels outside, but most of it looks kind of right. Yeah, that looks kind of right. And hands, of course, get really complicated because hands always get complicated in every art, in every art form. Actually, they're separate on ICS, so I should have a little gap between them. Ah. Okay. So I'm pretty I'm pretty confident these um these islands are actually right now. So guess I'll start with the kind of um Start with, the, start with the face, I guess. Start with the hardest bit, why not? Skin tones are always really hard to get right. Um, what kind of skin tone am I going for here? Because um, I was considering when it came to actually doing character design right, for the most part, these characters aren't really that dependent upon, um, you know, like for things like their, for, for, for some of the stories I have in mind, things like their particular kind of ethnicity or um, gender don't, actually factor into the character design at all, right? They're almost kind of like completely separate. The stories I have would kind of apply to any background, any kind of, um, any kind of actual physical character could, could portray those roles. So I was thinking like, is there, to kind of like avoid my own bias, is there actually a smart way of doing this? Like, could I actually get demographic information and then almost just do RNG? Um, I am still consider. I haven't done it yet, but I am still considering doing that. And the um, the difficult thing with it is getting unbiased data, because of course you know if you take just like say even like a a heavily multicultural um, city like say New York or London, um, there's still a majority population here because they're part of a host. You know that city is part of a host country that has its own um, majority. Um, ethnicity and background and things like that. Um, but then if you try and take worldwide, well, a lot of people live in places that suppress, say, you know, um, non-cisgender um, expressions. So it's actually really impossible to get an average view of the whole of humanity because there isn't really 
an unbiased source you can use. I guess you can only do the best you can do. Yeah, try, try and account for your own bias. Try and avoid, try, try and be, try and be um, what's the good word for it? Cognizant? Cognizant of your own biases and try and work around them. But there is always going to be bias just because we are actually human beings, apparently. <laughs> Okay. Now, this character is basically always going to be in dark scenes. Basically always, because the rooftop is kind of dark. Actually, I guess I guess he is going to be visiting some rooms. I might end up doing like an alternate texture of this that's more kind of like, um, um, more suited to kind of like brighter, brighter places. So that's symmetry tool I mentioned and I'm not using. Let's grab that. Let's move it in. This symmetry tool is so good. You can just sort of drag it onto or between pixels. And from now on, everything I do will apply on both sides. The only danger with the symmetry tool is that you forget to turn it off and you start pixeling over here and you start pixeling over here as well. <laughs> I wonder if maybe um, having like say a, a red arrow off the side or something going, your symmetry line is over there, would be quite useful for um, maybe making that harder to do. So yeah, the complication with skin tone is that um, I'm going to go for kind of like sort of like a bit of a, a dull pallor here. You know, I guess it's kind of a good way of describing it. And the reason for that is that this guy is, um, he's, um, you know, he's, he's meant to be believable that he could have died in his sleep. He's meant to be, you know, like that, that kind of age. But the, the complexity of skin tone is, um, it's not just, you know, for say like a, a Caucasian, it's not like just pick a sort of like vaguish pink and use it everywhere. It's actually really, really nuanced and complicated. It, you know, it kind of rolls a bit um, in sort of like Caucasian from kind of like a sort of like a more sort of like saturated red through to a kind of like more desaturated, not quite yellow, but sort of getting there. And getting that balance is actually really difficult. One of the other things I remember being mentioned in the sort of like uh, character sort of, you know, drawing classes, oh, that's a massive nose, we'll fix that, we'll fix that later, is um, there's a thing on the average human face called a, um, an oily T-zone. And it's pretty much um, across your brow and the kind of like uh, sort of bridge of your nose um, tends to get a little bit oily and kind of sweaty in just normal sort of, you know, even if you're not exerting yourself. And what you end up with is um, you end up with kind of like a shiny sort of T-shape. And again, once you know it's there, you can't unsee it. You see it everywhere. Okay. Oh, wow. That nose is gigantic. Sorry, Wario. Um, I might end up adjusting the UV islands a bit on the... A UV on the bit on the face just to get a bit a few more pixels so I can actually have a nose. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. <clears throat> I have to move this down, aren't I? Well, if I make a note of how many pixels I've moved it down, like say one, two, three, I can then adjust this to match. Ah, still got the symmetry tool on. So yeah, it's it's a hazard you forget it's on. Two, three, and then grab the body islands. Oops, I've accidentally grabbed the bottom of the face. Let's scale it up very, very, very slightly. And then the snapping to pixels is going to make things a bit hairy here because um, we're going to have a lot of new distortion introduced. It's just view selected so we can rotate the camera around it. And it has introduced a new distortion. I think we'll mostly get away with that. But that's given us, you know, that, that very slight increase in scale has given us the extra pixels that we need to make the nose kind of work. Why isn't this drawing? What's going on? 
I'm not doing wrong. Oh, I was like, why isn't this drawing? And the reason is the brightest color is actually, no, is that not it? Why isn't this drawing? Am I losing my mind? Oh, I know why. I'm on the wrong layer. Yeah, I don't I don't use layers very often in this application and it kind of confuses me a lot to be honest. Let's keep on doing until yeah, until we move this back. I probably do want the nose to be very slightly wider at the bottom, but not very much wider. Okay, and then I can see straight away that this kind of skin tone here is way too saturated. I've turned my symmetry line off on my doing. This is way too saturated. So we're gonna drop the saturation on it. And then dropping the saturation quite often increases the perceived brightness. So I actually need to drop that a bit. And get a bit more, a bit more. Yeah, people talk about skin tones, but it's not one tone. It's actually many tones working together. And that's way too wide anyway. And ah, the sun. Ah, doesn't this gigantic nuclear fusing ball of, uh, it's hydrogen, isn't it, in, in the sky, understand I'm trying to create art. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess that's the other thing is that, um, depending on what kind of environment this character is in, like, there might be sunburn, I'd never really considered that. But it's quite a gloomy world, so I'm thinking, so I'm thinking like he'd be more like ghosts. <laughs> Okay, so let's rein these in quite a bit and maybe press this directly up against this. Oh, that looks, that looks kind of wrong. It looks very, I guess it needs to be more kind of like towards the yellow side just to kind of. Just to kind of eliminate the kind of like blue hint it has. Okay, that's getting closer. That's getting closer. Man, he looks like deaf. He's got like a deathly, a real deathly pallor. That is like way more than I was really planning to do. But let's roll with it. Let's see where it goes. Let's see where it goes. So there is, of course, going to be a bit of a shadow under the nose, kind of like that, and quite a bit around the nose. And that, man, this, this guy's having a bad time. <laughs> we'll figure that, we'll figure that. So yeah, I was gonna have very thin hair on top just because it's you know, mostly gone by. Not that every elderly man has lost all the hair by that age, but most have. Let's have the kind of cheekbones. Just round that off a bit. Looks a bit weird having like that sort of mid-tone pixel between the brightest and darkest. And then you've kind of got like the side of the kind of like the whistle over here. So this is this part is usually quite yeah, the side of the temple. It's usually quite flat. So I'll avoid like lighting it or darkening it because it should be parallel to like the overhead light. Yeah, you know, the kind of theoretical overhead light we're working on here. The mouth does kind of stick out slightly. So we'll put, put a bit of a highlight on the top and a bit of a shadow on the bottom. Probably come back and adjust it later on. Again, like squint at it from a distance and that's kind of what we're kind of looking for, vaguely. Looks a lot more like a, um, a horror monster than I was quite going for, but it's kind of starting to get there. I might adjust this skin tone very slightly. Desaturated, so it looks a bit less out of place and then darken it because desaturating it very, very slightly lightened it. Okay, oh my god. Oh, man. it is so weird, like how human kind of like your know, face recognition works. And one moment it looks just like a blob of pixels, and then the next to you kind of like see a face, it just kind of pops out, and you're whoa! Almost get jump scared by your own, by your own drawings. Okay, so the ear is normally in the center of the head, and normally actually roughly in line with the colors. I've just realized the eyes are slightly too high because, um, this is one of the, um, 
this is actually one of the common kind of like um, character drawing traps is that eyes are actually typically right in the middle of the head and drawing them slightly too high is actually kind of like one of the um, it's one of the beginner's traps. So yeah, that, that looks more like it. Keep moving it down a bit. And there we go. And this distortion, I might try and fix this distortion here. So anything I can do really simply just to clean that up a bit. Um, I wonder, does the, if I turn on symmetry, does it move the other side? No, no, okay. The symmetry only applies to the 3D view. It does not apply to 2D. Okay, I might just do that. That massively improves our distortion. Okay. Again, um, if you're working in kind of like a higher fidelity kind of like environment and you're trying to make realistic looking ears, I mean, my hat, my hat's off to you because you're an actual genius if you can make an ear look good in you know, reasonable definition. However, oh, we just stick some pixels and rough in the right place. It looks kind of okay, I guess. There's a reason I like the style so much. <laughs> I might darken this back down to kind of like a baseline new shadow instead. And put a bit of shadow behind the ear just to kind of like really, really kind of sell that it's separated. It's a separate, it's a separate piece of flesh. And then run all around the outside with like the kind of like base tone. Oh, again, like, <laughs> when it just sort of jumps from being a pile of pixels to something vaguely recognizable as human. It's like a jump scare every time. It's great. <laughs> okay, how are we doing for time? Okay, 35 minutes left. Okay. All right, okay. So I don't currently have like hair colors. I'm quite happy with how this is turning out with like these four shades per kind of like, um, per kind of um, sort of palette index because previously I was using eight and um, it becomes a bit of a crutch because you end up like making hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of colors and it becomes actually quite difficult to assign them quickly because you're like, is it that one, is it that one? We've only got like four, you know, four levels. You can do it, you can go much more quickly. So, um, one of the things I am actually aware about with um, you know, elderly hair is that it's quite often blue tinted, but the reason it is actually blue tinted is that the, um, it's called a blue rinse, right? It's where, um, um, cause I think your eyes actually naturally um, go a bit more sort of kind of, um, um, sort of warm. Yeah, they pick up sort of warmer colors more, cl more clearly as you get older. So um, people tend to dye their hair slightly blue because they see it, they see it as being quite sort of like yellowed and, and elderly, but it's not actually yellow. It's not actually yellowed, but I think that's more of like a, I'm sure some men do it, but I think it's more of like a, a female thing, right? To kind of like dye your hair kind of more, more blue. So I'm sure I've got like sort of like a neutral sort of gray. And sort of around that somewhere. This outline is just a guide because of course I've moved and scaled the UVs since I've worked on this. Well, since I exported these UVs. That needs to go way closer to the, um, to the airline. How's that matching up with our, ah, oh, okay. Needs to go somewhere over here, probably something like that. You know what, near enough. I think that top pixel, we can get rid of it, but that's near enough for okay. Yep. Hmm. I 
think I'm going to have to read because like it's going to not quite slick, but you know, kind of like just sort of the hair just kind of like going towards the back. I think I'm going to have to sell that entirely in sort of like the texture because I don't really want to spend a ton of geometry like making making the, the uh, hair on the back of this guy's head. I do have plenty of like, um... oh, actually I don't. Yes, this has come to 247 triangles for this model. No, 160. Sorry, that was including the stuff around it. So yeah, like 256 triangles sounds like nothing, but if you're making something that's going to be quite small on the screen, you're not going to be able to get close to these characters. They're kind of, um, except maybe in some shots, but like they're generally going to be like further away. As long as your textures are like kind of really selling the actual shapes, you can actually go really low with triangle count and have, have something that looks at least reasonable. The uh, renderer this is going to be running with is, um, it's not integer based like the PlayStation 1, but it's, uh, it has enough accuracy problems that it might as well be, honestly. Something like that. But one of the nice things about it being entirely software is that those accuracy problems will be consistent no matter what platform you're on. So you'll never have to worry about booting the game up on, say, you know, a next generation console or something like that and finding that all of your geometry is offset by a pixel or something like that. It'll always be consistent no matter what hardware it runs on. Okay, so um, I kind of want to have like a bit of a scoop, right? It's kind of like, um, I'm trying to think what the uh, term is, because it's not a widow's peak, because that's kind of where it goes into the middle, and kind of, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like a V-shape, right? I um, think like the, the G-man is a good example of a widow's peak. But I wanted to kind of have a bit of a scoop inwards, so let's go like that. One more row. And then we're going to delete out the central pixels. The main reason I'm deleting that isn't to like save space, it's just that I can more easily see the kind of like the geometry when I'm actually painting. And then let's extend this up to here and then add a bit of just a touch of because it's going to be very fine hair, it's not going to be casting much of a shadow, but it is going to be casting some shadow. Okay, all right. Next up, we just widen this part a bit. At the moment, that's going to look a bit weird because I've got the mirror modifier on above. I'll be able to make this asymmetrical. This is like why why I'm duplicating, why I have this kind of asymmetrical like this. Might also be able to do some kind of like um, sort of spotting or something on one side. That's that's pretty common, right? I might actually end up running the hairline a bit closer just so we can kind of share a shadow with the ear. There we go. Aha. And now, now we start actually sculpting, well, not sculpting, but kind of texturing some kind of, well, texture into this hair. So, we have a very slightly cool, I know I wasn't, this isn't a blue rinse, it's, um, it's a very, very, very slight bluing, just to give it a bit more kind of something than, say, like, um, just a straight up, like, uh, white to grey gradient would have, it just gives it a bit more kind of, it's sort of interest. I've gone way too dark on that. Or I've gone way too light on the, I think I've just gone way too light on the lightest color. Yeah, I do want actually the characters a bit brighter in the environment just because they're meant to kind of like stand out. Yeah, they're meant to be kind of like, I'm a big fan of games like being clearly readable. And I don't mean like text, I mean kind of like being able to look at the scene and instantly 
recognize that objects are important. The question is, where would the highlights fall on something like this? Oh, that's way too dark. We'll figure it out. Where would the highlights fall? Because normally you have kind of like that kind of like ring of highlights hair around the top, right? But then I also want to really kind of sell this as kind of like flowing out this way. So it's going to be quite a sort of like a, a ring of highlights around here. Just roughly kind of like dot these in like this. Yeah, and then I want the darker kind of like turns down there. So we're going to want like sort of like a... Oop. Sort of made a weird bow tie out of texels on top of his head. That's kind of weird. <laughs> okay, and here I guess is it there? This is where like um, the whole kind of unwrapping it in a slightly complicated way does kind of come back to bite you, because um, it's kind of getting a bit difficult to figure out exactly where I need to plot pixels to put. Um, Put this kind of like ring of kind of like lit hair on top. Let's kind of like continue that down there. And it should, I think, completely fill the front as well, like that. And kind of over the top. Okay. And now. Shading some of the darker hair down here. The, at the very tips, it tends to be a bit lighter because there's less volume to kind of block the light. And then we go for a much lighter tone towards the top. Okay, maybe just a few little spots down here, just as like you know, tips catching the light or something. Oh no, that looks kind of weird under that. Let's just put in a few little bits and pieces down there. And one there. And at some point I'm gonna go back over that and basically just kind of like, you know, un make it look a bit less weird so that it's um it's got this kind of like mirror line down it. At the moment that looks kind of strange, but we'll fix it later on. Um I'm not too sure about this edge, it doesn't quite look right. I'm thinking maybe if I go to like the lighter colours along the edge, it might actually um kind of give it more of an impression that the uh the light is kind of able to, you know fight its way through the finer hairs at the edge. I don't really know though. I've not really done hair like this before. Oh yeah, that looks immediately better. Immediately. Um, I might actually run the hair right to the edge of the ear because it looks a bit weird that you've got this kind of like fringe. It, look, it looks like it's being cut to avoid the ear, but the rest of the hair looks uncut. So it looks kind of strange. So let's just sort them out in there. How's that look? That's starting to look more like it. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Don't worry, he will get eyes at some point. I'm actually thinking about making him wear glasses and having it so that when the um, when the angel actually appears to him, he kind of like, you know, is like, he's like, what? And he puts the glasses on. So the eyes don't need to look super great because you will never see them. You know, you'll only ever be this close to him without the glasses on. Let's, uh, let's see if we can like say like, Putting a bit of eyelid or something. Well, that looks kind of weird, doesn't it? Oh no, I prefer the hair was before. <laughs> Can we say do something like that? No, nope, that looks very weird. Ah, from a distance that actually looks pretty good. Up oh, close, it looks very weird, but from a distance. It actually kind of gives you that, eye, that kind of like idea of the, of the um, eyelids kind of like having a bit of volume to them. Okay, hey, hey, hey. this is starting to... That is starting to take shape. Damn it, it's so like... It's such a feeling when, some, when like a character starts to pop out of a, a tiny texture. There's a bit of instant gratification with a low poly style because you get that feeling a lot sooner than you would with, say, um, you know, if you're doing like a 10 million triangle object in ZBrush or something. It can take like hours or days for that to pop out, but this is the final model. Well, I mean, like, with regards to like ge geometry. 
No retopology needed here. Okay, so we're probably not going to get this finished today, but we can at least start and collect clothing and stuff. I might end up scaling up the um, UV islands for the clothing. We'll see once we actually start trying to put it together. So um, I'm going to have like sort of a jacket on, but I'm thinking like, you know, like even though he's, um, you know, he's, he's older and like maybe kind of like not doing great financially, um, he's um, still at least trying to dress relatively smartly underneath. Comp he's going to have a jacket on over the top of it to keep sort of warm because given he's, you know, in what's probably quite a cold room at night. But um, he's going to be wearing like a relatively smart shirt under that jacket and you're going to be able to see the collar kind of sticking through. So I'm going to try and hint at that with these very, very small amount, with this very small amount of pixels. Um, yeah, how am I going to do that? <laughs> I'm thinking kind of like a vaguely bluish kind of shirt for the, um, yeah, for the kind of like undershirt. So... Kind of like that, so I'm kind of like trying to hint at sort of like, see where that is. Yeah, that's about right. And then maybe kind of like have it kind of come like that. Slightly exaggerated, you know, a bit bigger than it would actually be, but we want it to actually be visible on the screen. Yeah, so that's basically kind of like his sort of shirt collar kind of sticking out through the, uh, between the sides of the jacket. Um, I need to think about also like exactly about how this guy's going to fit into the scene, because if I bring the rest of the scene back in, um, and the chair. Um, he's going to be sat in the chair at the very beginning, right? And um, I don't want to colour in too much from brown because he might just disappear into the background, even if he is slightly brighter. I can see that I'm going to have to make some adjustments so that's the, the colours I've already chosen just to make them fit a bit earth into the scene, which is kind of why I wanted them in the same sheet so I could kind of like see that more easily, but Jenny looks, Jenny looks really good. I'm, I'm, I'm always, I'm always surprised when like when the character starts to pop out. It's always just a moment of, oh, there you are. <laughs> Let's uh, shade a bit under here a bit. Let's see if we can get a bit more. What's the, where's this? Oh, it's another. I just never put any textiles on this guy, on this, uh, on this. Never put any, um, any. I never drew any pixels on this triangle. Okay, and then let's maybe do that just to kind of like, oh, that actually kind of looks a bit weird because like what's meant to be kind of like a point on the bottom of this kind of, um, on the bottom of his face kind of just from some angles disappears and from some angles just looks really stretched. Maybe I instead do kind of that. And maybe he has kind of like a bit of a, yeah, if we do kind of like that, it'll kind of like really kind of, if we give him kind of like a bit of a shadow halfway down his cheek, it kind of like makes it look a bit more gaunt because it's almost kind of like it's, almost like it's slightly baggy, right? No, I've just wrecked that. I'm going to leave that as it was. <laughs> yeah, may, maybe I can do that at another time. And it's also shade under here because this is meant to be kind of at the back, isn't it? Yeah, I've um, I've shaded in a bunch of pixels that don't actually line up any triangles, and I've missed a bunch that actually do. Now, do I put a bit of a light in here just to kind of hint at the side of the neck or something? Because quite often, yeah, like that catches the light slightly. No, that looks just really strange. I do have a darker color I could be using down here, though. Let's give that a try. Normally, you want this kind of like sort of a darker, kind of like a more saturated, kind of like pinkish hue 
in parts that will be kind of like um, have a lot of blood flow to them. So things like say the ears, because you can see you can always see like, the light coming through the back of the ear and lighting up red um, around the eyes. Because I, I guess eyes probably re eyes are probably quite um, oxygen intensive. They probably require a lot of blood. I don't know. I know nothing about biology. Let's see if we can get a bit under the chin here. We have a stray pixel. No, we don't. Okay, maybe we can put like a bit here. Oh, that's gonna give him a mustache. I didn't even consider giving him a mustache. That could be cool. Yeah, I'll leave that in there for now. See how I feel about it. All right, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. Let's do some few more shades of this. I only got about 15 minutes left, so probably get a first draft of, say, the, um, the shirt done and the sort of like jacket, but probably not much more than that today. Yes, we're gonna have a bit of the shirt visible through and just looks over at the hastily sketched pencil drawing I did this morning and I realized I had no concept art for my protagonist, which is a bit of a problem. W would have scanned it in, but I, uh, I literally drew it like three minutes before the stream, so. <laughs> I'm not gonna have the shirt opening that much. Yeah, this guy is like trying to take some pride in his appearance, so at least gonna try and keep the jacket pretty closed up. And then we have a bit of skin visible on top. Yeah. And the rest of it is all gonna be jackets, so I'm just gonna do shade in this slightly. It's kind of like give it the kind of look of kind of like it's um. Yeah, there we go. It's kind of got the look of the sort of the uh, color kind of like catching the light that's kind of coming from above. No idea why he's lit from above when nothing else in the room is, but we'll figure it out. Let's do a bit of a highlight here, a bit of highlight here, because it's going to be the upper chest, which tends to stick out slightly. Get those two rows. But I also want a bit of shadow off these collars, so I'm just gonna do that. Maybe a bit down here, cause like, you know, got a bit of a stomach, not too much of one though, cause he's meant to be a bit. I'm actually thinking about it, cause like, um, that's one of the kind of like um, paradoxes, right? It's like, um, there's never a correlation between kind of, well, there probably is, between sort of like wealth and kind of like weight and kind of like th things like that, especially in later life, because you know, you, um, you kind of like get older, you become more sedentary because it's harder to move. It's pretty common for people to like gain weight, like 70s and things like that. But also if he's not exactly, um, you know, if he's not exactly swimming in cash, which it doesn't look like he is given, given this like situation, he might not be eating super healthily. But then he might also not have the money to spend on say takeaway. <laughs> Okay, so let's go for a slightly brown toned sort of jacket, but not too much. Because again, don't want to just disappear into the chair. And let's just fill in as much of this as possible. So I've got the UV on, how well do they match up? Yeah, the tricky bit is when you get things like this here, where it kind of crosses across pixels, and it's like, well, does Blender export a pixel for that on the UV un unwrap, or does it not? The answer appears to be mm, sometimes. I might end up adjusting kind of like the head position because it's kind of a bit too far back, actually. Just pull it forward slightly. 
that became immediately obvious as soon as I put the texture on the uh, on the on the body. <laughs> and then, yeah, we need to cross way more of these way more of these pixels. It's probably a really smart way of like getting a really good quality um, sort of, um, unwrap, unwrap sort of thing out of Blender into a sprite, but I haven't found it yet. Oh, maybe I mean like if I was doing like um, you know, if this was say a studio of like a hundred people or something, I bet I bet there'd be enough demand for there to be a tool that would actually export the exact texels that are being covered um, by the engine. That'd be cool. That's not, that's absolutely not in scope. <laughs> so this color is going to be casting quite a shadow. I really want to sell this is kind of like a, a color and not just, I don't know, something else. And then you tend to have like shadow under the armpits because you tend to have the arms on the side. That guy is T-posing, but, um, but you almost always have a bit of shadow under here. And yep, let's bring the shadow forwards a bit just because um, the front of the arms currently aren't casting any kind of real shadow. The shoulders tend to be kind of like relatively bright unless they have long hair because in that case they've got kind of a bit of shadow on it. But we can kind of do this. Oops. Yeah, and then we can kind of like move that into, we can kind of blend that into the top of the arm. So the top of the arm is there. And then the kind of the elbow, I don't know what this the term for this is, but the kind of elbow pit, that tends to be shaded as well. So kind of like sort of there. Ah, but I need to um, extend that way further across because yeah, that entire left side, side is basically, is sort of elbow pit as it were. I'm sure that thing has a name. I haven't got a clue what it is. <laughs> Uh, but I need to be sort of tapering it a bit towards the bottom because it is about to kind of like cross over into the elbow. So up there, copy it, paste it. Oops, no, no, I messed everything up. Yeah, that's one, the the hazard of the um, symmetry tool strikes again. Yeah, selection gets a bit confusing with the symmetry tool because like if I select here, it actually selects on the other side, but then if I drag, it drags asymmetrically. It's a great tool, but you can really tie yourself up in knots of it if, you, if you're not aware of exactly what it's doing every moment. Okay, how's that look? That's probably about right. So then I'm just going to fill all this in. And then we're going to have a bit more shadow over here because it's kind of like in the armpit area. Um, I guess kind of like there will do. Okay, we need, a bit, we need one more pixel. All right, and then we're gonna do a ring of kind of middle sort of jacket color pixels around there and around there. And then shade under here a bit because the head is gonna be casting a slight shadow. We have one more darker color, don't we? Yes, we do. All right, so we're starting to get an idea of how this is gonna look. Way more to do on this though, way more to do on this. And you've got like uh, nine minutes left today, so I'm not gonna, not gonna finish this jacket today, but we've got the rough idea of how it's gonna kind of hang together. Um, oops, what did I just do? How did I do? How did I do that? I turned the camera up there and put it into orthographic mode. No idea. One of the things about Blender is it has so many like mouse and keyboard shortcuts that it's quite easy to accidentally do a lot of things you really did not mean to do. <laughs> um, all right, so 
I'm going to try and hammer in some rough colours for the trousers as well, just while we're kind of finishing up today. Um, maybe we go for like a really dark green. Just because I love messing with my background colour, I guess. Yeah, this bit of the unwrap is going to get complicated because of how the kind of like shoes have kind of, well, the shoes and feet have kind of merged into the uh, unwrap of the... Oh, that, that actually kind of works. Huh. Um, just because how part of the shoes are actually part of the trousers. But I can see where that... I can use that to kind of like give kind of like a bit of a... Because he's wearing quite baggy trousers for the heat. Um, it's going to be kind of like a bit of like a... Not quite a wrinkle, but kind of like a... Um, you know, like a, or a flap, but kind of like, there's going to be like that um, loose material at the bottom. Yeah. So let's make a few more shades of this. That should probably be the lightest we get it, and then we go darker from there, because it's meant to be very dark green. So let's reset it to kind of like the neutral color. Um, I think this is the inside leg, so I can shape all of this kind of like in the darkest color. Nope, it's not. Ah, yeah, of course, of course. Because it's not a flat on the inside of this, it's a point, because I wanted it to be a bit more kind of like, you know, I wanted it to have like a stockiness to it. And the, um, because this jacket is going to be quite baggy, it's going to be kind of like casting a bit of a shadow on the top of the trousers, but not too big a shadow. Okay, and then we start um, shading in kind of like a bit of light on the front, I guess. So, kind of here. That is way, there's nowhere near enough contrast between that and that. I'm very, very glad for my pillow fort right now because I would not be able to see anything without it. Okay, maybe I'm going to um, pull that in slightly more than that, just so that it kind of looks a bit more central. Is that more like it? Yeah. Now, I didn't really have too much of a character in mind for this guy, because, as in like an actual personality, because um, he was sort of the protagonist of the dream this game's based on, and protagonists in dreams tend to be very kind of flat and neutral, because they're almost kind of like... Well, characters in general, at least in my dreams, tend to be very flat and neutral. Um, but I look at this guy and like I immediately see, I immediately see some stuff I could possibly, you know, kind of imbue this character with. Some, you know, there's, there's kind of like um, it kind of looks like a slight grin, which isn't quite what I was going for. But like, I can kind of see a slight, a slight grin because it's like you know. It's, Maybe slightly upbeat about the whole thing. I was kind of making, uh, considering making, making it so when the angel kind of offers him the ability to kind of like, you know, decide people's face, he's kind of like, I don't know about that. I mean, that kind of seems above my station. And that's kind of the kind, that's kind of the guy he is, right? He, uh, not quite happy-go-lucky, but kind of like, and not necessarily jolly, but in that sort of a direction. Okay, so this kind of like rim around the outside is going to be picking up a bit of light because it's kind of sticking outwards. How's that look? Okay, I want to be quite careful here not to... Because um, <laughs> um, in sort of like recent um, years, I've done a few characters who are kind of like muscle, muscle bound. And this guy is not muscle bound. So like if I put too much kind of like um, sort of like here... You know, rounding on these kind of like pixel, uh, sort of pixel islands, I might end up with um, a really muscular, a muscular um, elderly person, which isn't quite what I'm going for here. He's kind of like more, um, it's, more of, it's more of a talky game than it is a, um, an action -y game. Okay, let's actually pull this around the corner a bit because I think you're mostly going to be seeing the back of the legs from kind of like this side. I could probably do like a bit of a extension like that. Just kind of like really kind of sell that kind of like. Mmm, that doesn't look great. Um, it's kind of weird that the sides would have like 
less highlight in the front and back, but I guess that's just kind of what happens. Maybe I could do with an extra sort of between tone for those. Okay, um, so I just got distracted by something. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> okay. So that's that color, that's that color, that's that color. I do have a brighter color, so maybe, maybe I make these the brighter color and then I use the darker color just to kind of fill this gap here down the side. So you don't end up with that weird thing of having kind of like um, just like darkness to the side. Okay, that's not quite right, but it's getting there. This is the front, isn't it? This is the front. So we want a bit of a visible knee, not too much visible knee, but you want a bit of a visible knee just because there should kind of be one there. Nope, that's the back. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. I got distracted and I got mixed up. Okay, let's bring this into like there. So I was actually kind of, I was actually looking at that again, that, that was going to be a really good looking knee. And let's do a bit up here, a between colour. And a bit of a shadow under here. And yeah, maybe a bit of a highlight up and around here. Okay, that doesn't look terrible. I'm gonna do a bit of adjustment on the side though. Is it, like, it feels like it feels like the side should have light on it, given that you know, like the side of the character will have light on it, but like it looks kind of weird having like, lighter pixels around there. Okay, and then I guess with uh, one minute left, one minute left, we can do a bit of shading on the. Hmm. What can I do? I'm just going to sit here in analysis paralysis for like 30 seconds rather than actually doing anything for the last couple of minutes. Okay. Let's do a, bit, a few kind of like wrinkles and stuff and just see how those kind of look. I really like the pixel perfect drawing in Ace Bright. It's just so nice because it means that you kind of get this nice kind of like perfectly one pixel wide line no matter what you do. Such a nice feature. Well, that looks terrible. Um, <laughs> I think that's gonna do it for today. Um, I am baking in this pillow fort, but it was definitely um, necessary to get the uh, get the shading right on this guy. So have a great Sunday, and I'll see you tomorrow at seven p.m. where I'm gonna pick this up.